Hello everyone, uh, Introduction to Order Theory, Lecture 29, uh, a new chapter today, uh, online algorithms and working on pulse sets. So, um, and, uh, online algorithms is, is something, is a line of research motivated, you could say, from, from uh, real life uh, situations where you don't have all the input at once, but it's gradually uh, disclosed and you're forced to make decisions on the way. In combinatorics we usually mm, model it with a, a two-person game where one player is, is the online algorithm and the other is, is an adversary usually uh, that wants to spoil and makes the like, algorithm hard. Uh, the easiest example uh, to, to present this whole model is, is actually on graphs, uh, say graph coloring. And there, um, there we work, uh, we play a game, which is on some fixed class of graphs, you could think, to start with, with all graphs. And uh, uh, the players are called presenter and algorithm, and it's played in rounds. In each round, uh, the presenter introduces a new vertex. Uh, together with all its adjacency status to the vertices already presented before, so you know to what you know the neighborhood, and no edges will be disclosed later. You know everything about this vertex with respect to the past, and uh, and the only restriction is that all the time uh, the presented graph should be in the class. Yeah. So if, for example, we are playing an interval graph. This all the time has to be an interval graph. Uh, it, it makes sense to consider those classes of graphs that are hereditary, so closed undertaking and use subgraphs. Uh, and then the algorithm is assigning colors to these incoming vertices. Uh, he should do it immediately after arrival, and this, this, this cannot be changed, it's irrevocable. And, uh, and obviously the condition is that the, the coloring uh, should be proper. So I'm thinking about the uh, usual graph coloring where adjacent, adjacent, adjacent vertices uh, receive this with different colors. And that's a nice game. Well, obviously algorithm, the position of algorithm is that he wants to minimize the number of colors used. It's a nice game, but unfortunately it, it's, it's hopeless uh, for the algorithm in, uh, in very even simple setups. Uh, so uh, already on, on forests, when presenter is, is just presenting a forest, uh, he, can, he can force an arbitrary number of colors. Uh, and, and forests obviously... So what should we compare to? Well, first, uh, first thought is to compare to with the optimum, offline optimum, which is the chromatic number. So for the three forests it's, it's just two, while I just tell you that the presenter can force any number. And this is actually something very classic and uh, maybe, maybe it's good to see it. Uh, uh, so let's quickly argue. Uh, so so uh, we're claiming that presenter has a strategy here, yes? So uh, the strategy will be defined inductively or recursively, as you, if you prefer. Uh, and it's a strategy for, for presenter to force n colors on the forest. And uh, so when n equals one, yeah, s one is 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 easy enough. We just want to force one color, so it's it's about to present a single vertex, yeah. And now, uh, now we want to work with n greater or equal to two. And we want to define as n. So this is this is this is fairly simple. What we do is we uh, we run 
uh, we run several times uh, a strategy for a smaller value of, of n. Yes, so we have S1, then we run S2 on the side, yeah, and then we run uh, S3 and so on, and, and the last thing is Sn minus 1, yes. And now, whatever algorithm did, we know that, uh, well, uh, here it used some color, let's call it alpha 1, and now here it was forced to use two colors. So in particular, there is a color here, which is not alpha 1, yes? Well, let's, 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 uh, let's pierce, let's fix this vertex of that color, and it's alpha 2, and so on. Finally, here, there is a vertex, so we fixed n minus 2 colors so far, and here, but here there are n minus 1 colors forced, at least. So, uh, so there is a vertex here, which has a color distinct from all the previous vertices fixed. It's alpha n minus 1 and then, when presenter sees it, the, the strategy is to present a vertex which is just adjacent uh, to, to those fixed ones, yes? And so obviously this has to be yet another color, so, uh, so this way at least uh, or exactly actually n colors forced. And now all you need to see is that it, it's a forest. And uh, this comes from the fact that uh, on this joint calls we had a forest. So uh, up to this moment that, that were like uh, these vertices are coming from distinct components of the forest and then we introduce a vertex that connects has just one edge per, at most one edge per component. So, uh, so that's the proof, yes? That's the proof. And then, uh, so, so the game is hopeless. At least if you if you really want to compare uh, to the offline optimum, which is the chromatic number, uh, if you accept that that you that you need to use a lot of colors and you still want to investigate the number, then uh, so it grows with the with the size of the graph presented. Yes, so it is fairly easy to see. That actually this strategy for, uh, forces uh, uh, forces log n. This is the exact number uh, colors on a forest on n vertices. Yeah, that's what presenter can force. And then a simple first fit algorithm, uh, uh, first fit strategy for the algorithm. So uh, so the strategy that uses the uh, the colors are the natural numbers, and the algorithm uses the least uh, number that is legal. Yes, that's that's the first bit. Uh, uses never uses more than this. So this is actually what we call the value of the game. Yes, so the, uh, we have defined the game, and then uh, on the fixed class of graphs like forest, and then on one side there is a, there is a, some strategy for algorithm that uses never uses uh, uses at most certain number of colors, and there is a, some strategy for presenter that forces at least some certain number of colors. And this, this, uh, this number for presenter is less or equal, obviously, than the number of algorithm. And in some, in some, uh, in some real games, it, it usually coincides. And, uh, and it's easy to see that here it's, uh, it really coincides. And this is the number. Uh, so, uh, well, so that's log n, and you can say, okay, maybe it's actually not a lot, yeah, maybe, maybe it's fine, yeah. And then uh, for bipartite graphs, actually it's easy to see that first bit for bipartite graphs is, is very bad. Can we, can we see it? Uh, what should we do for first? So this is, this would be colored number one. This is not adjacent, so it's called one. Then you introduce this vertex, it's color 2, and this vertex, it's color 2. So you see what I'm doing here? This vertex, color 3, this vertex, color 3. Yeah, because 1 and 2 cannot be used, so you use 3. And you move on. It's a bipartite graph. And what is the number of colors that you force? Well, it's, it's roughly n over 2, right? So very bad. Very bad. Uh, but there is an easy way to um, 
to, to come up with something reasonable here. And uh, there is an algorithm that uses at most two times log n colors on a bipartite graph. And this is, again, optimal up to an additive constant. Uh, there is there, there's some uh, exciting research here. But, well, actually, what we know, uh, we are stuck for many years. So these results here are from the 90s, I think. So in the triangle free case, there is a wide gap. On one hand, there is a beautiful construction that forces uh, squared of n colors. And on the other hand, really nothing is known. If we know that we, there is an algorithm that uses sublinear number of colors, but mildly sublinear. And that was already an improvement because before there was some log star function involved here in the denominator, I think. So, uh, mm, uh, that actually, in this triangle free case, what you could always do is you could just present a, a graph which is triangle free and requires uh, and with a high chromatic number. And from what we already discussed within this course, you know that there are these graphs with the square root of n over log n. So this, uh, you just present that graph, you don't care about the ordering, just present it, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Uh, uh, there is a way to shape off this log n, and this is the best we know. And actually, that, that, that result for all, in offline setting is hard. This one is quite easy and nice. Uh, for free color rule graphs, there is a beautiful algorithm, uh, strategy followed by Kirsted, uh, using uh, n to the 2 thirds times poly log n. And actually, for any fixed number of colors k, we know that uh, we know that we can use uh, um, n to the one minus uh, some function of k, which is always greater than zero, which means that you can always cut the exponent from one. Yeah, it goes to zero, but it's always greater than zero. So for ten color book graphs, you still n to the power, which is strictly less than one, is enough. Also asymptotically. So you see, uh, these are the kind of results and state of art here. Uh, there is one class of graphs, which is um, which uh, which is friendly from the algorithm side, and that's incomparability graphs. Uh, so uh, so when presenter is is restricted to, uh, to this class of graphs. Suddenly, Albert has a strategy uh, that uh, that uses a number of colors which is bounded by the offline optimum, which is the chromatic number. So there is a strategy, there is a function. So Albert uses at most f of omega. Now, in comparability graphs, in particular, are perfect. So chi coincides with omega. Yeah. So and chi is this offline. Uh, is this offline uh, thing that we want to compare? It coincides with omega, and traditionally we 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 bound it in terms of omega here. Uh, yes. The the order of growth of this function is rather wild, but it's it's a function of the offline uh, optimum. Yeah, so uh, quite good. And what is a what is a color class here when we color incomparability graphs? Yeah. Uh, a color class, so an independent set there is uh, is a chain in the corresponding pole set. So th this is how we get into an idea to to online chain partition a pole set. Yeah, when the pole set is given, it is only it is only easier for the algorithm. Yeah, it, the algorithm has more information than in the incomparability graph. Yeah, and in the incomparability graph, it just knows. If something is comparable or incomparable. In the pole set, you actually know the direction of comparability sometimes. Uh, so you can always use this strategy here, but it's actually more information, so you would expect um, you would expect better results, right? The dual theorem to Delors theorem is uh, quite easier to prove. Than the than the deal of itself, and this this difference in um, in difficulty uh, somehow carries on to the online uh, setup. So let's first start with an easier 
uh, game and a result for online anti-chain partition uh, of POSET. So here we have a theorem that the value of this game uh, when algorithm partitions online into anti-chain uh, now, uh, what, is the, what is the offline optimum that we want to compare with? It's the height, yes, because the number of antichains, the optimal number of antichains that you can partition the process is just its height. You can do it and you cannot do it better. And in the online setup, it turns out that you can always do with the number of antichains being h plus 1, choose 2, where height is at most h. And you cannot do better. Presenter can force Algorithm to use this number. So, uh, so we're going to see an argument here, and we will start with, uh, with an upper bound. So, in the upper bound setup, we want to have a um, strategy. Algorithm. So simply an online algorithm, right? And uh, <coughs> so it is nice and uh, simple, I think. Yeah? Algorithm maintains a, a family A indexed by a pair of numbers a, b, and, uh, and here a and b are integers, they are at least one, and their sum is at most h plus one. So, uh, so the, number, the number of possible pairs like that is exactly, uh, is exactly h plus one, which is two. And each, uh, each set of in the family will be an antichain. And this will be a partition of our pole set. And that starts obviously with all empty, with each set being empty. And now, uh, when the presenter uh, introduces new element, Then, uh, so yeah, so imagine that the pulse set so far is like this, yeah, it's pulse set. And now x is introduced, yes. So, um, what is going on here? Well, um, algorithm wants to see the size of the longest chain such that x is the, at the top, yeah. So, um, and this, this value, this length, will be a, okay? And the algorithm wants to record the longest, the size of the longest chain, such that x is the bottom. And this size will be b. And the size of the chain is the number of elements in the chain. So, uh, so that's two numbers, and obviously, obviously they are of size at least one because you can always take a chain with x itself. And uh, also, a plus b is at most h plus one because the union of these two chains is a chain, and we just double count x. So it cannot be the sum of two sizes cannot be uh, larger than h plus one. And uh, and then if, if x goes to a, a, b. That's it. That's the other. Now, uh, obviously what we need to show is that uh, that after this this change, the step a, a, b uh, remains an antichain. So suppose it's, it's, it's not an antichain, right? So if it's, if it's not an antichain, then there is some element y, yes, 
which was uh, introduced before, yeah, such that y is an a, a, b, and y is comparable to x. So y could be below x or above x. Say it's below somewhat. It fits to my picture. Yes? So, uh, so what are we doing to suppose the contrary that A, A, B is not an anti chain? Yeah? Say Y less than X, yeah? And Y is a, an A, A, B. So uh, Y was presented before. And uh, it ends, it was an AAB. So in particular, there was a chain there of length A. Yeah? And, uh, and now this chain plus X itself is a chain with X at the top. So it's a candidate thing and it is size is A plus 1, which, uh, which contradicts the fact that um, that x uh, went to a, a b. Yeah, so that's a contradiction. It's a contradiction of this comparability. So indeed, a, a b is still an antichain, and this algorithm just works. So uh, that was that was the proof that uh, that algorithm has a strategy. Now we can we can wonder if it's an optimal strategy, right? So the statement says that indeed it is. So presenter can force this number of anti-chain, whatever is the algorithm strategy. And uh, let me postpone this part of the argument here, because uh, it will be handy to present it already in the chain partition setup, uh, which, is, which is more interesting, and we spend the rest of the lecture there. So, uh, so let's... Uh, Let's see the first theorem here, uh, which says that the presenter has actually a strategy, yes? The, so in, in here we are in the setup that the, we're doing a chain partition, right? And on the, the optimum offline value that we compare with here is the width of the pulse set, yeah? And uh, the, the statement just says that the, that um, the presenter has a strategy to force uh, W plus 1 choose 2 chains. And uh, this, uh, this uh, strategy is very simple. So uh, we, are, we, want to, we want to construct recursively again a strategy for presenter. Forcing um, W plus 1 choose 2 chains on uh, with W order. Yeah, and uh, S1 is, it is again simple, it's just uh, present a single element. Good enough because um, in W equals one, we, have, we want to force one plus one, choose two chains, which is which is one. So it's okay. And then when W is at least two, the strategy is, is as follows. Um, so uh, <clears throat> the first stage is that. Uh, is that presenter wants to force a somewhat colorful chain. So wants to force algorithm to use many colors on a single chain. And uh, the way to do it is, is very is very simple. So uh, uh, we, we start with a single element as a presenter. Algorit colors it. Let's call this color one. And then, um, then we put an element that, above it, yes? And perhaps algorithm uh, uses again color one, because he can. But then we, 
you just present an element next to it and now uh, one cannot be used anymore uh, colors must be changed here so it's two yeah and then we continue so uh, so we put another element maybe three is used and we're happy we put another element maybe two is used we are unhappy so we place next three is used and unhappy four yeah and then say we we want to force five colors so we end up like this yeah and this is and here is our chain right And now uh, let me draw this uh, so it's clear what we are doing next. One, two, three, four, five. And uh, there are these extra elements here, right? And now we just, so that would be, so here it's, it's somewhat we are depicting what happens for S5, yes? And, uh, and here we just put a box here and call the strategy S4. Yeah, and these elements are incomparable with red and are below the white. Yeah, and that's that's the strategy. That's an illustration for W equals five, and uh, I think that the general strategy is clear from here. So uh, what we need to show is that. Um, but indeed, uh, a number of colors is forced. The number. So uh, how do we do it? So uh, simply, you you observe that these colors here used on the chain cannot be used in the box because um, I mean each element of the chain is incomparable to the whole box. So this this way, this way the number of colors forced. Is, um, is at least, so the, the length of this chain, so in general setup it's W, on each element we have a different color, and the number of colors forced by induction, which is um, W minus, uh, actually it is W, choose two, yes? So this is obviously W plus one, choose two. And, uh, and then the second thing to observe is that we are playing uh, on the right um, board. So we, we just presented a, a, a poster which is actually of width at most W. And this is again easy. So, uh, so what are the antichains here? So if, if we look at some antichain which is just from, uh, in the box, then it's, its size is at most W minus 1. And now, um, if we take anything in the box, we cannot take the white elements, so we can take at most one red element, and then the size is at most W. If we don't take anything in the box, we just have this chain and these hanging leaves from the chain, so the largest antigen we can take is these, these elements at the top, and again, there are at most W of them, because we were playing the game on forcing W colors, so at the leaves here, you, you can just see once each color. So, uh, so indeed, this closes the argument that, uh, that uh, presented pool set as width and most done. Okay, so uh, this is, this, this shows, yes, that uh, but in the chain partition game, algorithm can be forced to use a quadratic number of chains. Uh, I promise to, to relate to the anti-chain setup here to finish this line of thought uh, here. Uh, in order to do it, I would like to show you that we actually prove something more here. So uh, we can actually we can actually do it in a two-dimensional orders. So the, uh, the value of the online chain partition game on, on two-dimensional orders of with W. So I want to tell you that uh, the poster presented here has dimension two. 
So, um, so look. Well, so wh what were we doing here? So uh, imagine that you have two axes, yeah? And I present uh, elements as points in the plane, yes? So uh, that was element uh, 1, uh, that received this color 1. Yeah, then perhaps, uh, then presenter pre uh, gives another, another element, yeah? It was colored, say, 1. So now the focus it will be on this stripe, yeah, and uh, and the new element is presented. Algorithm decided to to use color two, so we are narrowing down to this stripe now, yes, and the new element algorithm uses say three. The stripe got shrinked again. Now now what happens? New element. Algorithm decides to use three new element here in this stripe now. Uh, four. Not uh, okay. I wanted to use two and three here, right? To follow that scenario over there. And now, yet in this small stripe four, and at the very end four and five. Okay. So this is this is what happened if we play the game on the plane. And this is our chain. Yeah, you see. And uh, these elements here are hanging. Yeah. That's the only comparability that we see. And now, uh, now, please, uh, please look with me at this certain stripe in the plane. So I, I'm drawing a line from 5. Imagine this is a line, but imagine that this is a very very narrow strip, okay? I want to have some space here. It just fits here. And uh, yeah. And uh, so we want to put elements that are below white and incomparable to red, so we want to put them here. Yeah, this is where we place S4. So you see all the elements in S4 are below the white elements, but are incomparable to the red elements, yeah? Uh, so you see that we can, we can uh, proceed with this strategy for presenter in this regime where we actually do more, yeah? First thing to say is that I just uh, presented you that all this poster is two-dimensional because I realized it embedding it into R squared. But, but even more is, is actually here true. What we did is that we, we presented this two-dimensional order with representation, yeah? So we even disclosed like a, uh, position in the plane, yeah? If you consider embedding in the plane as a representation of a, of a two-dimensional order, then it's given a representation, which is yet extra information, and still we force what we want to force. So two-dimensional orders, game on two-dimensional orders, say with representation. That's a yet extra bit. Uh, this is, we don't really need it, because uh, the two-dimensional one is the key. Because, look, uh, so we are forcing here uh, lots of chains on width at most W, right? And this is how we close it, yeah? But if you look at the same figure, but you consider a conjugate ball set, yeah, so we're presenting the same points in the plane, but our order relation goes this way, then you quickly realize that what you present has height at most. W and algorithm is playing now, and we are playing now the anti-chain partition game. So this proves that uh, the strategy for present is matching what we already proved. So this fixes the value of the anti-chain partition game.
and we have a stronger statement for the lower bound in the chain partition gate. Okay, so uh, that's nice. Now, um, already in the inter part, you've seen that uh, the algorithm does have a strategy in the chain partition, online chain partition game. And here it's, it's quantified. The, the best we know is stated here as theorem 3. So the value of this game is, uh, okay, it should be at most, of, obviously. So uh, when the value is at most, what we are stating is a, is a strategy for algorithm. Yeah? So the best we know is, uh, is a strategy that uses sub-exponential number of chains in terms of the width of the presented poset, yeah? So that into some polylog. Um, and that's a, that's a big open problem here. I guess the most interesting in, 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 in online algorithms for posets. Uh, the question if, if, if algorithm can do the job with polynomial number of chains in terms of the width of the poset. Uh, looks hard, nobody knows. Um, and uh, the proof of this, uh, this, the strategy for the algorithm here it is quite involved and we're not going to, uh, to cover it in these lectures. Uh, what we will do is we will um, we will see some um, some variants of the game with nice strategies that are well understood, and uh, so we will try to, to to list some ideas that are present in, in all this research line. Let's look at the upgrowing variant. Uh, in this variant, the uh, presenter is restricted, so um, uh, he introduces only elements that are maximal in the current order. So, uh, so for example, the game could look like this. So, first element, chain one, second element, chain two, third element, notice, maximum, all the time, maximum at the moment of arrival. Now, Albert has a choice, one, two, or three. Say it uses one, and then we can, well, maybe it would be wiser to put this one. Uh, one cannot be used, it's a maximum element, so it's a growing. And one cannot be used, two cannot be used, so it's, it's free. So at least we forced algorithm to do something suboptimally, right? Because this, this one has with two. So uh, here in this, in this upgrowing setup, uh, well, you can argue it's natural that when, when jobs are coming, they are usually along some linear extension, uh, but still uh, still, it's not possible to really play the optimal game here online. Yeah, You have to give up something, but uh, we do understand what is the best thing to do. And uh, this is quantified here in theorem 4. So the value of this game, the chain partition game, on upgrowing orders so we still, uh, we play chain partition, so we, we relate to the width, yeah? So of width at most w is exactly w plus 1 choose 2. And we will cover, uh, we will lecture the upper bound. The lower bound is nice, perhaps it will be an exercise. So uh, for the upper bound, uh, we want to devise a strategy for the algorithm. So. Algorithm maintains uh, a family of a family of families of chains. So a family um, F one up to F W, and these are sets of chains. So um, F i uh, contains 
at most IJs. Yeah, and uh, so this will be maintained, and uh, as this will be, and this will be a partition of a, of a pulsar that is arriving, and uh, the the number of chains is okay. Yeah, because we have at most one plus two plus plus W chains, which is exactly W plus one just two, right? So. Uh, and now, but the, uh, there will be an invariant this time. So, uh, what we are doing here, we are looking at the tops, at the top elements of the chain. So, Fi is a family of chains, yes. So, yeah, you can think of that. Here are the chains in Fi, I chains, yeah. And these elements are the top elements of the chains, yeah. And that's the, that's the set. Maximum elements of chains in Fi. And now the invariant is it's fairly simple. So for every I W. So this time we are not doing any kind of induction recursion. We just set up the algorithms right away. Uh, the tops of Fi is an algorithm. So that's invariant. And uh, yeah, because I, I did it like like that here, but obviously it didn't have to be the case. You know, you could have three chains like that, and this element could be below this guy, right? Or or below uh, even a number of guys here in the in the other chain. Yeah, but but this is not what we want. And now, uh, given the environment holds at the beginning, it holds accurately because all the chains will be empty. Um, uh, here's what happens when presenter mm, introduces a new maximal element. Yeah, so maximal comes from the fact that we are playing the upgrowing game here. Yeah? Um, what algorithm does? Well, we look at the index J, which is minimal I in Z1W, uh, such that Uh, either fi is less than i, so this is a set of chains, and maybe it's not saturated yet. Maybe they are not non. Uh, there are less than i chains here, so there is a space. Or um, or x is above. Yeah. So or there exists an element in the tops of. Um, Fi such that y is below x in the poset. Yeah, so uh, what does it mean here? So uh, if you envision this as your f, uh, yeah, fi, then what you want is either there are less, uh, less than i chains, and then it's fine, you can take this i, or uh, or it's saturated, so perhaps it's uh, i is equal three. There are three chains, but uh, but you have the property that the new element, yeah. So x is coming. X is maximal. So 
X possibly, well, you know, X might be above some elements here that we see, right? But maybe it's it's not above any of the tops. Yeah? Then it's, uh, we're not happy. But if there is a top, yeah? If there is a top guy Y such that Y is below X, then this I is good. So we take the least I such that it works. And observation number one is that uh, uh, J is well defined. Because um, look what happens for I equals W. So uh, what would happen if, if it, the property doesn't hold for W? So at one hand you have W chains. Yeah? And on the other hand you have an element X that is incomparable with all the tops. So what you see here is an antechain of size W plus 1. And that's, that's, that can't be. So that's a contradiction uh, if we, uh, well, this contradiction tells us that the thing is well defined, yeah? Because for W, it's, W is for sure good. Okay, so, uh, so that's, uh, that's J, but it's not yet, with, it's not yet Albert, yeah? So uh, what Albert does is uh, the following, so... Mm. So some chain, if you're above the top, then you're above all the chain. You see it in Fj, then uh, add x to c. Yeah, otherwise, otherwise we know that there are less than the j chains in j. Yeah, we know that in this case it must be that. And j is less than j, uh, and x is incomparable with the tops. Yeah. Uh, and uh, x is incomparable to tops. Okay. So we just add. Uh, and a new chain. Add a new chain um, singleton of x to fj. Okay, that's almost all. We will need to uh, twist it a bit to defend the environment, but that's in a moment. So, uh, so look what happens in this, this, this other case. In the other case, we uh, we have fixed J, so we have uh, we have a number of chains, but it's not saturated, yeah. So this could be like F four, for example, yeah. J equals four, and we have three chains, and we have the property that first of all, yeah, first of all, the number of chains is less than four. Second of all, X is incomparable to the tops. So now the element X itself will be the, the other chain, yeah. And, uh, well, obviously, the new chain is a chain because it's a single element, and the invariant is stands because the only thing that changes the FJ family, yeah, that has a new chain, and, but the invariant still holds because the tops are, tops are, is an antichain, because, because this is what we assumed uh, entering this case. Now, uh, but now in this case here, what happened is that the, uh, we had this um, fj, so say again j equals 4, and this is f4, yeah? And now uh, what we know is that x is actually above 
some, some tops, yeah? So these are the tops. And Alex is above some of them, yeah? Maybe these two. So what we did is we just, uh, yeah, we fixed the chain in C. So for example, this chain, that X is above it, and we added X to that chain. So this is fine with respect to the chain partition, but it is not fine with respect to our invariant. Yeah, because now, you know, this is the new chain, and the tops in the new setup are these four elements, and it's not an anti-chain anymore. So we need to fix it. And uh, the way it is done is, is, is quite uh, simple. So uh, we are using definition of, uh, so if it's, not, if it's not good, then we know that j is greater than one, yeah? Because we added x to one chain, and we are not fine with respect to the other. So j is at least two, yeah? And then, uh, so what we are doing is a simple s uh, switch. So we, uh, the new fj family that we denoted by fj plus is that all j minus one union this chain and the, old, and the new j minus one family is the old j family about the chain. So, uh, so you see, this was a setup for f4, but uh, j was this, uh, the least uh, index, yeah? So in particular for f3 it didn't work. And what does it mean that 3 didn't work? It means that f3 has three chains and all the tops are incomparable to x. So that's what we do. We take these three chains and we, we take uh, the new chain C and this is our new F4. And for the new family F3, we just take these three chains from the old F4. And this way we, we not only assign x, new element x to a chain, but we also defined the invariant. And this closes the proof of the upper bound of theorem 4. Now, uh, again, the lower bound is going to be a very nice exercise. And now let's have a look at this table here, where I collected uh, a state of art of what we know uh, in different uh, variants of the online chain partition game for post sets. So, um, so you see here is a class of post sets, and I uh, I want to narrow down quickly to some interesting subclasses, most uh, notably interval orders. But here is for all orders. This is what we did so far. Uh, so on one hand, we have a column for the upgrowing, uh, uh, for the upgrowing restriction, and for the for the representation, which will be meaningful in a moment. For all orders, uh, I don't discuss any representation. So this, this column is is meaningless here. So when we play on the on the all orders, this is what we know for the general problem. And it's very it's quite a challenge to get it down to polynomial or to understand that we cannot. In the upgrowing setup, the theorem 4 says that we have exactly uh, the values exactly w1 plus 1 choose 2. Now <clears throat> It's lots of fun to, to see how the value behaves on some uh, nice rounded class of posets. And uh, interval orders is, is, is a natural thing to study here, as, uh, as uh, this, this online uh, setup is pretty much modeling, combinatorially modeling the, the scheduling. Uh, this is the simplest scheduling you could think of, yeah. Uh, the chain partition, yeah. So, so, yeah. Like you imagine that each chain goes to one, I don't know, processor, yeah, or something like that. So, uh, so interval orders are is is a natural suspect here to study, and uh, and then here uh, you have um, you have two natural variants. You can you can think of that elements are coming, like in an abstract way, like we thought about it so far, or but you can actually think that intervals are coming. So presenter uh, is giving you the representation. 
This is more information. This is potentially more information. So algorithm can do some good, good work on it, yeah, and uh, and this could lower the value of the game. So uh, in fact, it doesn't. And uh, we un exactly understand the value of the game on interval orders, no matter if it's with or without the presentation, it's 3w minus 2. It's no surprise that it's lower. Well, uh, I wanted to say lower than this, but this is not growing. Uh, it's no surprise that it's lower than what we know here, yeah, because it's a, it's a very nice and restricted class of process. It's linear in the optimum, what we can do. And uh, we actually know the value in all the other variants. So, for example, in the upgrowing setup, it's exactly two w minus one, and this uh, this is this is quite straightforward. So, uh, semi orders are those interval orders that admit unit land uh, interval representation, and uh, and there there is an open problem which is quite, quite exciting. It's in the variant that we present intervals themselves. Yeah, with no, with no restriction to upgrowing. So it, it's now that it's at most 2w, well, 2w minus 1, and at least 1.5w. And these bounds are really silly, yeah? So the 2w minus 1 bound comes from the first bit, or any kind of greedy uh, coloring here, yeah? So chain partitioning, when you look and you play with intervals, like here in this case, it's just coloring of intervals so that intersecting intervals uh, get distinct colors, yeah? And, uh, and now the presenter is, is, is giving us unit length intervals, yeah? And, and we are playing on bounded width. Bounded width means bounded click number in the interval, uh, in the intersection graph of intervals, yeah? So when, when a new when a new element is presented x, so new interval, new unit length interval x is presented, how many intervals it could actually intersect? Well, whatever you intersect, you must uh, you must hit it with your left endpoint or with your right endpoint because there is nobody uh, sitting here because everything is unit length, yeah. So how many guys can you hit with your left endpoint? Well, at most w minus one, yes, because we are playing on the click number w. And at most w minus one things you can hit here, and these guys could block you at most two w minus two colors. So two w minus one colors will always be enough. So that's the upper bound. There is no better algorithm known than this. And the lower bound, the lower bound is is just one point five w, and this should be fairly easy. To explain, so uh, what you shall do is you you present a block of unique length intervals of size k. We are doing the presenter here, right? So we want to force one point four. So we are doing size k here, and now so and this is our like and algorithm uses here some colors. And we're going to call them old colors, okay? Colors used. So there are k colors used here. And now we are building a kind of kind of staircase here. So we are starting with a with an interval here, and algorithm does the job. Okay. So old colors are yellow, okay? So it's either old or it's new, yeah. So uh, so say it's old. Then what we want to do is we present interval here, yeah. Yes. So maybe maybe this time it's new. It's some some new color, yeah. That makes us happy. Then we present an interval here, yeah. Maybe it's uh, new, yeah. It makes us happy. We present an interval here. So eventually, what we have is like a clear cut between new and old color, colors, yeah? So it, it's roughly like this, yeah, that such a staircase is, uh, is presented. It's a click, they all intersect, yeah? But the, the left guys have, have new colors and the right guys have old colors. Now, I want to present here 2K intervals. 
and they are at most k old colors. Yeah. So so the number of new colors is at least k. And that makes me happy because I finally present a block here above new and above old uh, of size k again. And here I cannot use the yellow and I cannot use the red. So I need to use yet another pack of colors which might be green. So what did we do? We forced, uh, forced 3k colors. And what is the quick number? Well, it's 2k. Well, we should watch out a bit, yeah, because I, I said that we put it on the on the new colors, but maybe there are more than k new colors, and I just want to put up um, above k new colors, because um, because I want to set that the the width of this guy is bounded by 2k. Uh, so this gives us 1.5w, and uh, it's wide open. It's wide open. It's, it's actually the only variant left here. There, there is some interesting stuff like, like this variant, upgrowing semi-orders. The actual value of the game is the gold number times W. Uh, okay, so that's, uh, that's a quick overview of the topic and let's, let's have a look uh, at this very nice uh, game on interval orders themselves. So, the value of an online chain partition game on interval orders with or without representation is 3w minus 2. We, we do both upper bound and lower bound for both uh, variants of the game. So, uh, luckily, we don't need to do four arguments, it's just enough to do two in more restricted set up the upper bound and in more restricted set up the lower bound respectively. So let's let's first start with the lower bound. So um, lower bound is about giving a strategy for a presenter and presenter is more restricted in the case it gives internal representation because it gives more information to the algorithm. Yes? So here we want to devise a strategy for a presenter for a presenter that um, uh, the forces forcing uh, algorithm to use uh, At least three w ah three w minus two. Uh, let me call them colors, yes, because um, uh, because somewhat playing with intervals, it's it's more natural to discuss colorings than chains. It's just uh, name. colors on uh, a collection of intervals. Collection, uh, you know, in the pulse set, when you look at it as a pulse set, it's the width bounded. When you look at it in the intersection graph, it's a click number bounded, yeah? Uh, click number most large. Okay? And uh, as usually, uh, this, this will be a recursive one, and uh, the width one is, 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 is fairly simple. Yeah, we just, we just do this. And uh, three times one minus two is equal one. So uh, it just works, right? And uh, let's enjoy the situation for larger values of W. So here is what we do. We, uh, the presenter starts with playing many copies of the previous strategy, of strategy SW minus one, on disjoint fragments of the axis. Yes? So, yeah, this bubble is, is strategy SW minus one being played here. And then here, and here, 
and here, and so on, and here, yes? Many times played on a different on different uh, on this joint um, fragments of the axis, yeah? Okay, so what do we want to achieve here? Well, our goal is to get 3w-2 colors. Sw-1 is forcing 3w-1-2, which is 3w-5 colors. So in each bubble we have 3w-5 colors forced. So if, uh, if in total the number of colors is, is at least 3w-2, we are happy we stop. So, otherwise, the uh, algorithm keeps using uh, same, uh, uh, at most 3w-3 uh, colors, yes? And uh, in, each, uh, and in each bubble, we see at least 3w-5 of them, yeah? So in each bubble, we can fix some 3w-5 set of colors used. And then, since there are lots of bubbles, and the whole set of colors is bounded, there will be bubbles with the same set fixed. And I want to have the same set fixed four times. So, uh, perhaps here, and here, and here, and here, we have... Uh, yeah, let's make it straight, huh? They are not necessarily consecutive, yes? There, there, there can be lots of stuff in between, I don't care. But there are the four copies with the same set of 3W-5 colors used. So perhaps, perhaps there are more colors here used in the bubbles, but I don't care. Uh, I'm happy with the 3w-5 that are here, 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 and here. So now, uh, so we need three more colors, yes, but luckily we have one larger width, yeah, because the width here is just w-1 and we can play with w now. So here is what we do. The presenter presents this interval and Albert must use uh, some color the interval is, is going over all the bubble, so it can't be a color from here. It must be new with respect to this set. So let, let's call it color one, yeah? Presenter plays, uh, plays an interval here. And now Albert has two possibilities. Either it uses again color one, or because these, this set of colors is again block. Or it uses a completely new color too, yes? So if the algorithm decides to use color one, which might look more sensible, yeah? Then the presenter presents here an interval, and now again, 3w minus five colors are blocked here, and one is blocked, yeah? So uh, this must be a new color too, and then we present this as a presenter, and now 3w minus five colors are blocked again, one is blocked and two is blocked, so that's the third color, color forced. And in the, in the case that uh, that uh, algorithm use the same color on the two external intervals, well, no, the same was already done, uh, so distinct. We just the presenter just presents an interval stretching all of it, intersecting this one and this one, so one and two is blocked, three w minus five are blocked, so it must be the third color. So this way, number of, uh, number of colors forced is at least three w minus five plus three, so it's okay. 
and the width, the width or the click number, let's call it the width, is at most obvious because, uh, well, you know, from the red bubble you can take at most up to minus one, that was the width, and you can take at most one blue, yeah? You can take two blue only here when they overlap, but they overlap on the piece of the axis where there is no red bubble. So this is just two intervals, and since w is greater or equal to, we are good. Okay, so that was the proof for the lower bound. And, uh, and now we devise a strategy for algorithm that actually defines this number. Okay. So the upper bound. And now the upper bound we want to do uh, in the more restrictive setup for the algorithm, so this time without representation, yeah? Without representation is more challenging for the algorithm. So even if someone provides him the representation, he may simply not look at it, right? So, uh, so now we are without representation. And uh, so uh, for w equals 1, the uh, situation is quite simple because uh, algorithm, uh, well, presenter just presents a chain, yes? And algorithm may just use one color. Yeah, so that's uh, algorithm uses one color. Yeah. Um, that's that's okay. And now when the, the width is larger, we will have a, again a recursive setup for the algorithm. So what algorithm does is uh, make, uh, it maintains a partition of of our elements of our interval order. There is a greedy part and the remainder. Remainder. So algorithm maintains a partition of the interval order into two sets G and R and G comes from the greedy R comes from the remainder. Now, the invariant is that, uh, that the width of the greedy part is uh, at most w minus 1. And then uh, what happens when presenter introduces a new element x. So, uh, so if we can put it, to the, if Alfred can put it to the greedy part, it just puts it there. So if width of the greedy part, mean on x, is less than w minus 1, then uh, Add uh, x to g, otherwise add x to r. And now, uh, so that's that's maintaining the partition, but the uh, algorithm, after all, should uh, should color the elements, so should partition it into chains, right? And uh, and uh, the idea is simple, right? On the greedy part. Algo calls mm, it's the strategy. How do we call the strategies here? We didn't call them. Okay, so that 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 sample strategy was a one, and now we are defining a w. Yes. So algorithm calls a w minus one 
on uh, on G. Okay. So, and then the, and then on the remainder, an algo does first hit on R. And now the count is simple, yes? So on the greedy part, on the greedy part, algorithm uses AW minus, uh, calls AW minus one by induction, the number of colors is at most 3W minus five, yes? So all we need to do is to show that on the remainder, using first fit, algorithm uses just three, yeah? And then, the, uh, and then in total, it will be 3W minus 2 as required, yes? So all we need to do is to show that first it uses just three colors on the remainder. Please note that indeed this, uh, this online algorithm is, uh, is working with all representation, yes? As, uh, the only thing it does is it calls itself before uh, or eventually uses first bit. And first bit really doesn't look at anything you, you just need to know which uh, which colors are blocked and which are not, and this it's enough to have the the, the comparability or incomparability graph in this case. Right? Okay, so um, so why first fit is efficient here? Well, this is fairly simple. So. Um, um, Well, now we define an algorithm, and uh, we know it doesn't rely on representation. For the sake of algorithm uh, of the argument, now I consider some interval representation, and uh, so imagine like something has came, has come. Uh, it's a new interval x. It arrives to the remainder. What happens? Yes. So, and fix now, fix the interval representation of the whole business, yeah? So you have the greedy part, yeah? And you have x, right? You have a new guy, x. And it doesn't fit to the greedy. Why? Because the width explodes. What happens if the width explodes? Well, there are w intervals that pairwise intersect, right? By the Halley property, there is a, there is a point on, in the plane that, uh, that hits w, w minus 1 here, and this guy here, correct? So this this value we could call r of x, right? And now every, every interval in, in r has its value, right? And, uh, and obviously, nobody from other than x can, can contain the value of x, because then the the quick would be too large, correct? So, uh, so this quickly means that in the R, there are no two intervals such that one contains the other, yeah? Because the, the value of the smaller would have to be contained in the, in the larger. But even more generally, there is, uh, there is no interval that is contained in the union of the others, right? This is also not possible. But this means that, uh, that all that, if you look at the possible intersections of the intervals in R, it induces a collection of paths, yeah? You can't have three intervals intersecting the line, yeah? Because you would take the closest, well, the furthest left end point and the furthest right end point, it could be the same interval, and then the third one is covered by the two. So, at most two are intersecting on the line, and so the, the whole business like you can see is stuff like this, yeah? Collections of puffs. So effectively, if you look, go back to the graph that then, if you look how, how element looks in, the, in R, we, we're just coloring uh, online puffs, yeah? And how many colors we need to do coloring online puffs, yeah? 
There are other collections of paths here. Yeah? We do a first fit. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two is used. Then suddenly someone could join two paths. And one on one, one end could be one, and the other end could be two, and that's three. But uh, you cannot get more. Well, simply because the degree in your graph is bounded by two. So three colors always do. And that's the proof. Uh, for the for the upper bound. So it's 3w minus 2. Okay. We conclude today with, a, with an application, uh, actually of our uh, uh, variant of the game on the intervals. So uh, let's have a look. Let's go back to chi boundedness for a moment. So we discussed uh, the section graphs of axis aligned rectangles in the plane. That's a, that's a lovely family, and, the, and it's a big open problem if uh, we know that the chromatic number is bounded uh, by a nice polynomial, uh, asymptotically omega log omega, and it's open if it's, can be, if it, if it's linear or not. Uh, the lower bounds that we know are actually silly. So uh, what are the lower bounds? Well, obviously, obviously chi is at least omega, right? Okay, can we do better? Hmm. Well, uh, one thing that immediately comes to mind is to take something like C5, yeah? Um, so C5 is realizable. And then now if you blow up each rectangle, yeah? So each rectangle is actually, are actually K rectangles now, yeah? Then we have a nice graph. And what is the what is the click number of this graph? It's uh, it's two k, right? Yeah, because uh, uh, that's just two k rectangles that pairwise in this side. But what is the chromatic number? Uh, well, there is a there is a nice way to color it. Uh, so we we would use like a s bundles of colors of size k over two, yeah. So we would use set one and two here. There are k rectangles, so k over two colors from one and k over two colors from two. Here we use three and four. Here we use um, so the trick is to mix it up. So we use one and five. And then here we take uh, two and three, and here we can take again four and five. Yes. So that's a proper coloring. Uh, so this way we prove that chi is at most five times uh, k over two, which is. 2.5 k, right? But uh, I, I, I want to have a lower bound, and I just color this, so it, it's not a good direction. Um, how to argue? But this this is this is tight. You cannot do better than this. I'm quite sure about it. <clears throat> so you, in order to argue that, you, you should go through the inequality with the the chi is uh, lower bounded by number of elements, uh, vertices in your graph, over the independence number, yeah? And what is the independence number of our graph? Yeah, how, how many rectangles can we take per rise disjoint? I think it's 2k, right? Because uh, we just take... What am I doing here, actually? Yeah, it's 2k. It's 2k because we, we we take those, that's k of them. No. Wow. Yeah, that was a good question. What am I doing? Uh, so what is the independence set? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not 2k. Okay, let's see. So it's, uh, I can take one and just two, yeah? Independent set is just of size two. Is it true? It looks like it, yeah? 
So, um, given that, that we have the number, number of rectangles is 5k over 2, which is 2.5k. That's a proof that our coloring is best possible. Uh, okay, but what does it give us in terms of the in terms of omega? Well, omega is 2, chi is 2.5, so what is it? It's, uh, it's uh, 2.5 over 2, right? So it's uh, 1.25 omega. This is what we prove. Okay, some silly construction, and we got to the 5 quarters of omega. So, uh, the best known bound is um, P omega. And I know no easy proof of it. Actually, it was, it's claimed by Sasha Kostoshka and it, it never written. Um, so, uh, but from our 3 uh, W minus 2, actually from the lower bound of it, yeah, we will get the bound like this easily. And the idea is very nice. So, uh, so let's, uh, so I want to fix a uh, strategy for presenter. It is, uh, well, you can think of the best strategy for presenter, yeah? As a strategy for presenter. In the game, when presenter gives intervals, yeah? So you could think of the strategy where it was like, we have the, this interval, and then this interval, and then depending if this is one and one, then this one and this one was coming, and if it was one and two, yeah, then this one is coming. Yeah, that's a reasonable uh, that's a reasonable strategy to force three colors, right? Uh, so, uh, but now strategy for presenter on uh, intervals on collection of intervals of uh, click number. We fix the click number, uh, so say most of them. And any given strategy, so this strategy of forcing forcing a number of colors. So let's let's not uh, let's not make it general. Let's let's force the three W minus two immediately. But this the construction because we are going to construct a set of axis re aligned rectangles in the plane. It works for any fix. Uh, strategy for a presenter, okay? And now, what is the idea? Uh, and then, from this, we will get a collection of intervals, yeah? Uh, two, uh, axis aligned rectangles. And we will have the property that chi will be greater or equal than uh, 3 omega minus 2. And uh, how do we do it? So, uh, so you should think that the strategy in general is is uh, is given by the tree, yeah. So at the beginning, presenter decides to present some interval, right, like this, yeah. And then, uh, well, at the beginning, uh, there is only one thing Albert can do because we can. The name of the color doesn't matter, right? But then, uh, then in general, so okay. And then, then maybe there are two intervals like this joint. And now there is a decision. The same colors or different colors, yeah. And then based on the decision. Yeah, uh, so we branch because algorithm is free to choose. We we do something else, right? And then perhaps the branching can be large because the decision of the algorithm is to use one of the number of colors, right? So if algorithm wants to defend against three W minus two, then it's the branching is three W minus one minus three. So that's that's the uh, that's how I see the in general strategy, and now from the strategy from this tree, we can build a family of axis line rectangles, and uh, let me just depict it to you how it would look like here. So, say this was our first interval we present. So we present the so the projection the x axis projection is just the interval itself. Now, but this this rectangle will be very high. Yeah, it's the first one. And then, so this one is actually presented uh, together with this one. There is no branching, so this, would, this guy would be as high as before. But now, 
there is a decision by algorithm, yeah? the same color or distinct color. And now, uh, and now we, we split our, our stripe into two stripes. So we can fix of, you know, you have a stripe here, and you have a stripe here, yeah? And now in one stripe, we play, we, we play the branch, the one branch, so maybe color one one. So in that case, uh, this and this was presented, right? So we would present this rectangle and this rectangle, yeah? Again, uh, it doesn't matter what our grid does, so there is no branching here, so I simplified a bit. So that would be, that would be it, right? And then the second branch, just this guy is presented, so that would be here, yeah? So in general, yeah, the, the general description is that you have that you have your business, and then you have stripes in the plane. Yeah. So for each, so we are modeling a tree. Yeah. And now we went down to some part, and each leaf that we see now, maybe it's yet unexplored downwards, corresponds to a stripe in the plane. Yeah. And now. In each uh, in each stripe, each stripe corresponds to one of the leaves. And now in here, there is a decision that okay, we present so this corresponds to this, and there is a decision that we present some interval, and we present this interval. So the x projection is exactly the interval, and the y projection is as large as the stripe. Yeah. And now, given this guy here, algorithm perhaps has options, and each option is a new scenario. So we split this stripe into smaller stripes, right? So now there are like four stripes here, and I, so I take one, ah, one stripe, second stripe, third stripe, fourth stripe, yeah? And these are my new stripes that correspond to new leaves, and that's how we continue. So we are building the family of axis and rectangles. And now what we shall prove is that the uh, First, the, the click number is bounded by by the click number of the uh, of the of the game that we were, was played here. The bound, yeah. So by W, and this is simply because uh, because if you see a click, then it, there must be a scenario that this click whole click is played, yeah. Because objects from different scenarios they don't intersect. So that's why the click number is bounded as it should be. And now why the chromatic number is, is large? Uh, this is because you can, someone tells you, I can color this. And I can use less than three omega minus two. And you say, okay, go on, color it. But I, I don't want to look at your coloring. Let's play the game. Let's play the game. And uh, so you present it to, you present intervals. You look at the corresponding rectangles, and the algorithm is is, is taking colors from this offline coloring. There is no way that one can defend. Okay, so that's uh, that's an example how how we can leverage lower bounds this way. It's not the only. It's not just one peculiar situation. I, I, I've seen these arguments recurring from time to time. Okay, that's all for today. Next lecture, we continue online algorithms. We do first bit for process. Thank you.